has an idea for you. The haunted house. 10 in the morning till 10 in the evening on Valova Street. The plague physician has lost his hat. That's why I wear a little string around the neck, mind. You may have noticed. This is my first stop today. I'm going to investigate the trams for getting me to the train station tomorrow morning. I heard a rumor that apparently tram number one is recommended at reception. I've been looking at tram six and seven from slightly different locations. Well, completely different locations, to be honest. But now I'm just going to investigate tram number one, particularly with regard to any posted timetable, because I'm taking the information for trams six and seven, which look promising about the sort of time in the morning when I want to head off to the train station. I didn't see, tram, for some reason, tram number one didn't pop up. And tram stop number one is just up here. Looking for where the tram stop is and where, hmm, where times may be posted. So let's look up here. Looking quite promising, isn't it? By the way, forgot to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on the planet, whatever time it is where you are. This is the tram I'm looking for. but in under 24 hours. That will serve me nicely, hopefully. But again, as I say, I'm looking for a timetable. I'm not expecting one to be posted because I just don't think they do that kind of thing. But hopefully I'm wrong. I see a lion over there. Let's have a look. It's a cafe. Looks a bit like Aslan, doesn't he? Almost ready to talk to you. Come on in and enjoy an ice cream, why don't you? An ice cream Sunday, or Monday, or Tuesday, or any day of the week. We're open to serve. How does that sound as a lion impression? Not very impressive, was it? And I see the, uh, the tram stops up here, but just as I supposed, there's no timetable posted. Just as an afterthought, a question I posed to reception today before leaving the hostel. And I actually found tucked away in a corner, a large wad of these maps of Lviv. Why are they tucked away in the corner? For some reason, reception don't have them on general display at the check-in point, which seems a little bit strange to me. But what do I know? Over there is the statue of that man Fedorov, the printer and <coughs> cannon maker, maybe, allegedly, I think. Book salesmen are out, much better weather than when we were there the other day and the rain was coming down. I'm on my way to something in particular today. As a sort of, well, I guess it's a bit of a test for my lungs. I'm not really going to put them to a hard test. Don't think that would be wise. But I do just want to see how they fare if I try to walk up to the high castle today. Feeling okay at the moment. I'm not in a hurry because I know there are too many things I'm not going to be doing this trip. As the receptionist quoted back to me my own words. So it means you've got to come back again if you haven't seen everything that you want to see. And she's right, of course. It's 
especially after such a long time of being away from Lviv. Last time I was really a tourist here was, well, I suppose you could say a little bit 10 years ago, but far more, nearly 20 years ago, that's when I really was out and about and exploring and going into every museum and climbing up to the high castle hill point and visiting the very nice, what's it called? Let me see, get, let's get the pronunciation right. I, I was going to call it Liachiv. Liachakiv Cemetery. Beautiful place, really stuck in my head from all those years ago. Very nice one in Vilnius as well. Of course, everybody flocks to the one in Paris to see where Jim Morrison was buried and a whole host of other famous people. And it is a beautiful cemetery from what I've seen. Never been there in person, I don't think, apart from extremely briefly a hundred years ago when I had an extremely brief holiday romance I suppose you could call it with Rosa Rosa from Australia how time flies I suddenly feel as I'm projected back to Kaunas. Look at these sculptures. Don't they remind you of Kaunas? Do you recall? Have you seen the videos from Kaunas? Perhaps yes, perhaps no. An artistic movement of bizarre sculptures. There we have a former palace of Catholic archbishops. Shall I stick my nose in? Be nosy. strange trick of the light. Not the first time that's happened when I've been in a place which appears to my naked eye to be dark but at least through the back of the camera, the viewing screen, it appears as though the light's been boosted somehow. Perhaps it's one of the weird things that this strange camera does like put the visual and the audio out of sync sometimes you may have noticed and switch itself off just whenever it wants to in fact probably not even recording this right now because it's decided to switch itself off I'll double check in a moment because you have to with this Acaso V50 bless it and this is St Clement's Church some eye-catching iconographic artwork in the windows wouldn't you say uh, it's also museum of something or other i think i'm actually going to go up this way because on the map at least it looks closer that could be a red herring i might be gasping for air calling for oxygen where's my sherpa but so far the incline isn't as steep as i thought it might be well this is interesting Hostelok and a picture of a map packer with I love Lviv on his sweatshirt by the look of it but the odd thing is I don't see obvious signs that it is actually a hostel frankly I'm quite glad that I'm not staying here location is a little bit out of the way that's sometimes it's an advantage sometimes it's not a problem here I wouldn't want to be halfway up a hill what kind of hostel is it what's its name maybe it's just known as Hostelok Clock 
closing in on the high castle. A lot of stuff up here. A few little cute birds and butterflies and bees, of course. Some history to it. Necessary that you understand Ukrainian. Tu yestes becomes tu tut. Hmm. I wonder if those other statues are worth looking at. And there's a bus timetable. Now they tell me. Oh, well, it's not too bad a walk. Now, what have we got here? Separation. Okay. Is that the way to the high castle? I'm thinking it probably is, you know. But this looks to me as though you're not allowed to go up there with cars. But equally, yeah, I don't want to risk getting <laughs> um, caught with this camera looking highly suspicious. Actually, halfway up, bizarre place to put the sign, rather than having it at the front entrance. Restricted area, do not enter. Prohid Zaborezhino again. So, yeah, I don't think I'm going to risk getting into trouble going up there, even if locals feel quite relaxed about it. I'll let them explain themselves to the men with the guns. <laughs> it's a sign I meant to just enjoy a lovely walk, listening to beautiful bird song. Don't know if you can hear that. In a nice space where there aren't too many people. This has got to be good for my lungs, hasn't it? This fresh air. I've definitely done the right thing. Especially on those days when the rain's been coming down, you know. I definitely don't want to become a slave to this YouTube malarkey. Um, or a slave to my desire to be a tourist to get back to being a tourist. If the health or the weather or both aren't in your favor, take a day off, take two days off. There's always something else that you can do with your time, isn't there? If there isn't, then I, I think that's most unfortunate. In my case, I've been uh, doing some of my, well, extremely amateurish video editing for past footage which I've recorded along the way coming down here to Ukraine through the Baltics and Poland. That's something I really wasn't sure I would be able to balance well if I was being active out all day walking and filming and talking and seeing things and maybe getting caught up in interesting conversations with interesting people which happened, funnily enough, in the Krakow Hostel and in the Kaunas Hostel. And a little bit in the hostel in Warsaw. Greetings to George and his three dragons, by the way. Here in Lviv, not so much. Have met Theo and Bo. Um, for some brief exchanges. But that said, I'm not especially looking for chats with people. I'm far more an observer than I am uh, chewing the cud with other Westerners who, well, it's none of our business what's going on here really, is it? Other than the fact that if it wasn't for Ukraine standing strong, the rest of us in Europe would be in a pile of shit right now, probably. Pardon my French. And I hope the French pardon me using that expression. But you know what I mean. If you feel like an adventurous roller coaster of a walk down the hillside, here's your option. As for me, I'm going to take the footpath round and this perhaps is one of those first obscure sort of statue 
markers on the map we saw at the entrance to the park, the High Castle Park. And what are we to make of it? Maybe it is genuinely ancient, but there's absolutely no information in any language. I'd love to think I'm looking at something that's genuinely ancient and it's that's how it's been for a thousand years or more. But I have to leave that to our imaginations. So what do I think of the hostel on my last day in Lviv? Dream hostel. I had to ask myself, okay, if I came back to Lviv again in the future, you can hardly come back in the past, can you, you fool? Would I stay in dream hostel? Would I stay in high hostel? Would I mix it up like I did this time? Would I choose another hostel altogether? Hmm. I would be happy to stay here again as a stopover because there are so many other things I haven't even touched on, which I could do on another one or two visits. About the hostels, well, on the face of it, Dream Hostel is far more modern and appears cleaner and fresher, um, more new and appealing. Uh, but it does have some long staying guests and with that means, you know, some of them are precious about, they feel they own the only decent pots and pans in the in the kitchen. Um, there was a funny sign written in English and an angry looking sort of face drawn on the paper saying do not touch, which was kind of childish I know uh, and in a hostel ludicrous. If somebody's brought their own pots and pans with them, then keep it in the locker. But there's plenty for, for everybody to use in there. It's a reasonable amount of utensils. But there is that feeling as an adult that you're in a bit of a teenager's hostel sort of atmosphere there from time to time. Therefore, that's a negative um, for Dream Hostel, as is the issue with the very noisy doors, because frankly most people can't be bothered to get the card key out of their pocket when they leave the room and use it to enable them to close the door quietly. So if people are leaving the room as they were last night about 20 times, and I'm not joking, in about a 20 minute time frame around 11.30. In and out and in and out and in and out and in and out of their underbed lockers which they drag on squeaky wheels. Uh, for goodness sake. Whew. It's not super early in the morning or super late at night, I know, but it is a bit irritating especially when you, you're wondering what is that person doing? How many times do they actually need to go into their locker? How many times do they actually need to go in and out of the room? Astonishing. But that's about the people staying there, not the hostel and what the hostel can provide. And I'm thinking if the long-termers weren't there, because right now perhaps they are arriving early for the um, new semester to start or perhaps they never went home I don't know perhaps some of them are just living permanently in Lviv and feeling it safer because their families are elsewhere I can't tell the hostel what to do but it seems logical to me um, if the hostel put the students in dormitories together, 
dorm, dorm rooms together and then perhaps set aside uh, certain rooms where they put the non-students. I'm not suggesting putting Ukrainians in one part, non-Ukrainians elsewhere. I think um, as I've had several sort of um, over 20 year old Ukrainian guests in the dorm with me, they seem to have a better sense of courtesy and respect for other people who might be trying to sleep first thing in the morning or last thing at night, just in general. And I think the students can do their own thing in their own dorms. It just seems as though it would be a logical thing to do to keep everyone happy. I don't particularly want to be in a foreign country and feel like, oh, they've shunted all the native English speakers together. But overall, it kind of makes sense if they do that. Brings me back to High Hostel and what I think of High Hostel. Oh, isn't this a lovely birdhouse? Shame it's just a pigeon and not a more interesting bird going there to look for seeds. Never mind. <clears throat> yeah, High Hostel. Maybe it was just when I was staying there and it was an, uh, an exceptional time and it's quite unusual for them. Or maybe it's the regular situation. Lots of workers, frankly, doing their own thing, shift workers, and honestly, they were well behaved. They, they were not the type of workers who were coming in and then making a dreadful mess in the bathrooms and dominating the TV too much and <clears throat> cranking up the volume to an ear bleeding level. Like I've experienced in some places, there were no late night drinks parties, which was good. Um, no rowdiness. I wouldn't say that was a negative having them there. Overall, where have I slept the best? I would say in High Hostel, the rooms, can't imagine why, but where I was on the top floor, incredibly hot and therefore difficult to sleep. Whereas wasn't that issue with Dream Hostel. Well, that's a nicer piece, isn't it? What can I say other than this is the way down? I wouldn't be adverse to staying in either hostel again. Yeah, I would probably go for just the cheapest, to be frank. You know, if there is a difference of significant monies, then let that be the deciding factor because I really can't choose between them. Whereas just to satisfy most people, I think, go to Dream Hostel because if they see High Hostel, they'll get these ideas in their head that because the building's old, crumbling, hasn't been tarted up, isn't attracting any, anyone other than, well, mostly middle-aged workmen, then they, they, they wouldn't like it. I think they'd much prefer to be at Dream Hostel. But the actual bottom line for me is there are advantages and disadvantages with both. If the prices were the same, and if the same guy was on reception, Kostya, at High Hostel, I would probably choose High Hostel. I'd let him be the difference, because while the girls working at reception at Dream Hostel are super, really super, perfect English, perfectly friendly and helpful, no, um, attitudes or anything. Uh, very professional as well. I, I just felt, you know, for long conversation and for listening to that chance to listen to somebody who's a local person who can actually tell you something of their life experience and their view about 
their country and things and and life in general then the interactions with Kostya were that little bit more valuable to me than having an immaculate looking dorm room for example so yeah those are my thoughts but either hostel would do and I would probably be in one or both of them again at some point in the future if I live long enough. <laughs>